On this 4th of July week, I want to talk a little bit about the Gospel of Mark, Abraham Lincoln, and a few things that you can do to heal and repair a house divided. Stay tuned. Hello, friends. Pastor Tim Westermeyer here, Senior Pastor of St. Philip Deacon in the western suburbs of Minneapolis. Good to be with you as always. This is um, the 4th of July week. It's uh, Thursday of this week. We're taping it earlier in the week, of course. But I I have that uh, important national holiday on my mind. And I've also been thinking about uh, a particular Bible verse. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we have been reading from uh, the what is it? The fourth and fifth chapters of the Gospel of Mark. This upcoming weekend, we'll be reading from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And I was actually sort of backing up from that a bit anticipating this coming weekend, just to get a little context of what Jesus is doing and so forth. And in chapter three of Mark, um, Jesus is attacked by uh, the rulers, the Pharisees, the um, uh, and they say, uh, you know, you're doing the work of the devil, basically. Even though what he's done is healed people, he's cast something evil out of someone. And so Jesus asks the question, this is in Mark chapter 3, uh, verses um, 23 and following. He called, he called them to him, these are the people attacking him, and spoke to them in parables. And then he says, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. That has become a very famous phrase, um, in part, uh, in large part, I think, actually, because of Abraham Lincoln. You may know that Lincoln used that phrase in a famous speech called the House Divided Speech. This was in March of 1861, before he became president, um, a little before the Civil War began. And he literally says, um, uh, well... In my opinion, it will not cease until a crisis shall have been reached and passed. A house divided against itself cannot stand. And then, of course, later after the war, uh, or after as he's being, uh, he's giving his second inaugural address, he says in these beautiful, sort of towering, poetic words, "With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right." Let us strive on to finish the work we are in. We are the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. So I've got all that sort of bouncing around in my head. The, the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus talks about the House United. I'm thinking about Abraham Lincoln and the crisis he ushered the, 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 our nation through uh, during the week when we celebrate our nation's founding, Fourth of July. Um, and of course, we find ourselves today in a polarized time uh, during a time when our own uh, house, uh, political house, national house, is in many ways uh, deeply divided. And so I want to lift up uh, three things uh, for us to either think about or do as we sit with that reality, one in the past, one in the future, and one that you can do right now. Uh, The thing in the past is actually a talk from last year's Faith and Life uh, series. Uh, I think I've mentioned it here before, but I'm going to commend it to you again. It's by Dr. Alan Hilton who is a pastor uh, who created a number of years ago an organization, a nonprofit, based again on that passage from the Gospel of Mark, um, uh, which is called not House Divided, but House United. And the whole emphasis of his work is to help us realize that difference can be an asset rather than a weakness, and to learn how we can listen to one another and be in community with one another, even if we don't always agree with one another. And so I would commend his talk. It was called uh, Faith and Polarization, Surviving and Thriving in, again, a House divided. There's that same language, okay? So we'll provide a link to that uh, in the video and and maybe down below. Uh, That was his talk, uh, again, earlier this year for the Faith and Life series. That's the thing from the past. The thing in the future, 
also involves Dr. Alan Hilton, and we will talk much more about this as we approach the fall, uh, but it's actually going to be a a a series of events and classes and conversations led by him uh, for the good people of St. Philip Deacon, as well as I think he's hoping to have 10 or 12 total congregations from around the country participate in this. This will be from September through January. So during a period of time in our national life that, as always happens during presidential elections, is likely going to be somewhat contentious. So uh, it includes, again, St. Philip Deacon. It will also include churches from Arizona, from Texas, from Florida, from Utah, from California, uh, maybe from Georgia, Connecticut, and Colorado. And again, we'll talk more about that, but I just want you to know that we are planning on doing this important work with um, with Pastor Hilton, and I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for us to listen to other congregation members, to other Christians around the country, to get to know them, to hear about them, to let them uh, teach us as we uh, both learn from them and maybe share some of our own thoughts. And again, we'll share more details about that um, in the months to come, but be aware that we're planning on that. So that's the thing in the future. And then the thing right now, and I think we've, we, well, I don't think I, we've done this. I know we have promoted this in a number of ways. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, but among other things on our social media and some other um, communications, we have this uh, summer prayer series. It's very simple. Um, it's praying for our stewardship of natural resources, uh, praying for the human family, and praying for our nation. So again, the created world, the whole world, and our nation. And all of those prayers actually come straight out of um, our hymnal, the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Hymnal. Um, And so uh, I'm going to conclude today's reflections about all of this simply by lifting the prayer for our nation up. Again, during a week when we appropriately remember and celebrate our nation's founding, but also maybe grieve the ways that we are indeed a house divided, uh, and we can pray maybe that we can come together uh, in unity, even amid difference. So this is uh, the prayer for our nation, uh, which again, we're inviting you to pray throughout the whole summer months along with the world uh, and the created world. So here's the prayer. God, our refuge and strength, you have bound us together in a common life, In all our conflicts, help us to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, to listen for your voice amid competing claims, and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people say to that, amen. I do hope you have a wonderful and safe 4th of July. Thank you for being with me today. And until next time, be well, stay in touch, and God bless. Mm -hmm.